Imagine a future where you could eat meat without any of the ethical questions or environmental impact. Well, that may not be too far off. The rise of plant-based meat alternatives and lab-grown meat could completely upend the conventional meat industry. But amidst the headline-grabbing breakthroughs, one big question remains. Will people actually eat it? The moral and ethical reasons for not eating meat evoke a lot of different feelings, but the environmental impact is clear. According to a recent study published in Science Magazine, meat, aquaculture, eggs, and dairy provide just 37% of our protein and only 18% of our calories, but use 83% of the world's farmland and contribute to nearly 60% of its emissions. Over and over again, people can say they don't like how animals are treated, they don't like that our earth is not doing well, that our environment is not doing well, they're going to continue to eat meat. So how can we give them what they want to eat in a way that is better? This is Nicole Manu from the Good Food Institute. They're an industry advocacy group that is working through the regulatory and marketing challenges that stand in the way of alternatives to conventional meat production. It's important that we make sure that plant-based meat is at the same price levels, as convenient to purchase and cook and eat, and that it tastes just as good, if not better. Cell-based meat solves that problem even more so because it will taste like animal meat because that's exactly what it is. Veggie burgers are nothing new, but the newest crop from the likes of Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods are a totally different animal. With cutting-edge ingredients and processes, they taste and look a lot like the real thing. Mm. A lot of vegetarians would find that it's actually too meaty. If you didn't tell somebody, they would have no idea. While not yet as affordable or available, lab-grown meat has taken it a step farther. This is not a meat alternative at all, but rather an alternative to conventional meat production. The result is actual animal flesh. These plant and lab-based substitutes are crazy advances in the field, and people have been talking a lot about them. But we've spent far less time figuring out if and how people will actually change their meat consumption habits. In fact, Despite an evolving conversation and advanced alternatives, meat consumption in the U.S. is at an all-time high. So how do we get people comfortable with eating things that sound kind of weird? One lab in Denmark is trying to find some answers. We're here in the heart of Copenhagen's meatpacking district to visit Space 10. Space 10 is an IKEA-backed research and innovation lab, and their team is cooking up ideas for the future of food. The mealworm sticks, you want to try them? Yeah. Not spicy, but it's more um, mm. sort of a little bit of sour cream and vinegar or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. The reason why we started exploring food was actually because we played around with some interaction design students and they came up with the idea of a smart faucet. Something you can install in your shower and it will start to glow when you've used too much water. So we were like, okay, if, if we are doing this, then it needs to fix the problem. So what is the problem? That's the scarcity of, of, of water. And then we started looking a little bit deeper and then we found out, okay, like a normal hamburger takes 2,000 liters of water to produce. That's three months of showering. We might have a right solution, but we're not, uh, but we don't have the right uh, problem. Focused on that problem, Space 10 has pushed the envelope to try to normalize what many of us think of as weird when it comes to food. In the beginning, I was, I was definitely the one saying, okay, but guys, this is fucking dystopian. Meats that are grown in petri bowls in a lab, like, that's not natural. And then someone said, Simon, just YouTube meat production. And then I was like, okay, the way we produce meat today is not that natural either. It's pretty hideous, actually. This might come as a, as a surprise, but IKEA is one of the biggest restaurant chains in the world. Like everybody thinks IKEA, thinks furniture, but also thinks meatballs. We kidnapped IKEA's iconic meatball and we projected future food trends on there. So everything from lab-grown meat to insects to algae to a bunch of trends. After years of experimenting with different sustainable ingredients, Space 10 has combined it all into their most recent project a cookbook called Future Food Today. The cookbook makes futuristic and non-traditional ingredients look beautiful and most importantly, like something people actually want to eat. 
So in the Future Food today, you can find a bunch of different recipes and some of them are some snacks and hacks, some of them are drinks, but some of them are also more hands-on. For example, the Douglas hot dog where we infuse spirulina algae into the bun. But then we also experiment with alternatives to meat like grasshoppers where we take them and make crisps out of them. All the grasshoppers and worms in the book, I mean, you can't hide what they look like, but we don't want to do that. We just rather open up the conversation and showcase maybe some of the things that are disgusting to people right now, but they don't have to be. We are not believing that a cookbook, for instance, is going to bring like a global food revolution to the world. Uh, what we are here to do is basically share our research, spark conversations about what options do we actually have, and, uh, and, and then really engage with chefs around the world. There have always been vegans, there have always been vegetarians, there's always been animal rights activists. But even though people understand the implications behind producing meat, they continue to eat meat. So you kind of have to figure out another way to solve the issue. People at the end of the day are going to do what they want. So we have to give them another solution. Thanks for watching. If you like the future of food, stay tuned for our new series, Future of Cities. Subscribe to Freethink Now to be the first to see new episodes.